Alright, so here we are. Since Metro The Last Light has released, I figured I'd give the series a shot, so I bought both games on Steam and jumped into the world of the Metro. You play through the game as Artheum, a confused young man with the eyes of the devil, but the voice, oh, the voice of an angel. The thing that gets you involved is the power of the plot point, in which a man named Hunter, he asks Artyom to deliver a message if he doesn't come back from his investigation. Sadly, Hunter never does return because he's off dancing with hookers or eating some herring while downing a bottle of vodka or something. So it's up to Artyom and whoever wants to die while trying to save Artyom to save the day. First and foremost, I feel I should state earlier that the game is heavily about atmosphere. You'll feel it in every second of the sound design, every footstep, every howl of the wind. It's as if someone made this for survival horror and then just threw in the guns, dropped you in the middle of it, and just sat back saying, Okay, now let's see what he does. The Metro is an absolutely perfect place to pull this off though. The tunnels feel naturally claustrophobic and at all times you know there's not a lot of space to run around or maneuver. This becomes immediately apparent as you look at the life of the game. It seems like a hopeless life. It starts that way, it ends that way. Honestly though, because of the atmosphere, the game absolutely begs for more of a stealth approach. But it never truly punishes you for going in with guns a-blazing, you know, outside of the apparent death that you may suffer because Artem can only handle like a bullet or two before he's dead on the ground with the people pissing all over his body. And that's the fragileness that actually makes it a key point of the immersion. You're less likely to ramble your ass off through the game because you are the equivalent of a cardboard given flesh. And on the topic of immersion, Let's talk about the sacrifices made to the atmosphere in this game. With the, a, a game of this style, attention to detail is a must. From the game's guns to the sound, everything will work to correlate the experience that they're trying to deliver. And for the most part, Metro 2033 delivers, but if there's one thing I absolutely hate, it's those damned autosaves. Perhaps it's done for the sake of immersion, where the game just autosaves at some point. But in this game, that's not a good idea. Things are scarce in this world. Ammo, money, which is also fucking ammo, food, hell, even people. But this game saves are so random, who only knows the kind of situation you'll find yourself in off your last save. Because one of the most limited commodities is freaking air. You know, air. The stuff you breathe in order to live. Especially on the surface. So the time you have to live is always haunting you. Telling you you have five minutes to live until you find more air which you find in the form of filters. So what happens when the game says when you only have ten seconds left to live because you've been fucking around? Granted, I will give the game credit. You shouldn't have been fucking around. It's a survival type game. You should have been pushing toward the objective. But I was fucking around! Alright? Anyway... Thankfully, there are a lot of filters scattered about the game, but time survival and auto saves do not a friendly game make. And while I have this moment, speaking of those damned air filters, you better look for them unless you wish to have Artem having an asthma attack in the middle of your adventure like I did on several occasions. It got so bad at one point, I started to even talk like that after I had even turned the game off. <sighs> What's up, mate? Hey, man, what the fuck wrong with you, dude? You acting kind of nothing. Just you gotta get a sandwich. Man, calm the fuck down. You're just acting up. Yeah, like that. Now, the game isn't perfect. The enemies are kind of dumb, getting stuck behind things and still running at you. Sometimes the little wolf vanishes as they rush you. But that only happens seldomly. Characters of the game are well done, and most do a great job, but the show is stolen by Omen at the end. That guy had me laughing my ass off during the whole last stage, and I found out why he was such a funny ass character, because at the end of the game there's the most annoying enemies I have faced in a long time. They deserve an award for how much they pissed me off. Those fucking amoebas! They're like little balls of doom, even on normal. I can only take two hits. 
and they just kept on respawning because you have to take out the spawn points, but the spawn points can take an ass load of ammo, and you don't have much ammo. It was fucking maddening. Anyway, it's a good game, and the score I give that game is a 2.